MPV is a free open source video player that's amazing for language learning, largely for three reasons. First of all, it just happens to come with a couple of features that are very useful for language learners. Second of all, it's very customizable, so you can tweak anything to be exactly how you like it. And third, and most of all, it supports user-made scripts. And some people in the language learning community have created some really powerful scripts that basically make it really easy to use pop-up dictionaries and make Anki cards on the fly. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install and use MPV. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to use some of the scripts, but for the nitty gritty aspects of the scripts, I'm probably gonna leave that to a future video because it can get pretty in the weeds. And first of all, I just wanna show you guys how to set up the program because it isn't exactly the most user-friendly one out there. I will say that once you figure out how it works, it's not bad at all, but it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to actually even just get the program installed. So I thought that I'd save you guys the hassle. Now, before we jump in, I just gotta talk about two quick caveats. First of all, although you can use MPV on any operating system, I personally have a Windows machine, so I can only show you how to set it up on a Windows machine. And uh, second of all, most of the language learning benefits that MPV offers are really reliant on having accompanying target language subtitle files to go along with whatever target language video you're gonna be watching. So uh, there are still some features that you could probably benefit from even without subtitle files, but I will say it's important to have a, a video file you wanna watch in your target language and the accompanying target language subtitle file, and that's going to allow you to do a lot of really cool things, which I'll show you in a second. So let's jump right into the installation. So to install MPV, you want to go to mpv.io. That's the official website. And then click on installation at the top. And then on this page, if you're on a Windows machine, then you want to click on the first link right here that says Windows Builds by Shinshiro. And then that will take you to this page. And on this page, you want to click on 64-bit, unless you have a 32-bit system, which not many of you probably do. And then on the following page, you want to click on the first link right here. That will be the newest version of it. So I'm going to click and download it. It's a .7z file, which is similar to a zip file. And see, so yeah, I've already downloaded it, but I'll just download it again. And then once you've downloaded the 7z file, you want to open it up with whatever program you normally open up condensed files in and extract the contents to a new folder called MPV. So I'm just gonna make a new folder called MPV and extract the contents of the 7z file into that folder. So now, don't need the 7z folder uh, file anymore, I can just delete that. And if you wanted to, you could run MPV locally just by opening up that folder and running mpv.exe. And we can see here's a file I have, I could drag and drop it and watch that file right here. But you can also actually install MPV onto your system and that has a couple benefits. So if you wanna install MPV onto your system, then go to your programs file folder. So for me, that's C drive, program files, and then just drag and drop the MPV folder into the programs file folder. So you can see I already have it here. And then once you've done that, open up the folder, go to installer and run MPV install.bat and that will install it onto your system. Now, uh, when you do that, make sure that you right click and run it as an administrator, otherwise it's not gonna work. But once you run the mpv install.bat, that will install it onto your system and it will allow you to do a couple things. First of all, it will make it so that you can set file types to open with mpv by default. So for example, right now, this is an mpv file that I have on my desktop and it's set to open with VLC by default. So if I just double click on it, it opens in VLC media player. But because I have MPV installed on my computer, I can right click, go to properties, and then right here where it says opens with, I can change that to MPV. And now it will open with MPV by default, which is what I want. And also, depending on whether you're running it locally or not, that's gonna change where you install script files. And so when I show you how to install scripts later on in this video, I'm gonna be assuming that you've actually installed MPV and that you're not running it locally. So like I mentioned in the intro, MPV is extremely customizable. You can pretty much control every aspect of the program. But the thing is, the way that you control the settings isn't through a kind of graphical interface like a lot of normal programs. Instead, the way that you customize the settings is that you create a text file and you write up all the settings that you want 
in a specific syntax within that text file and you save it to a specific directory in MPV and that is how you control the settings. So if you're not a programmer, this is probably gonna seem really weird and foreign to you. It feels pretty weird and foreign to me because I'm not a programmer myself, but I'm just gonna walk you through how you can get good starting settings that will probably take care of everything you need. I personally didn't go that deep on the settings. I just got some advice from some other people and copied some other people here or there, but I found something that works well for me. So I kind of suggest that you just copy what I've done and that should work well for you unless you're a pretty technical person in which case you can go to the configuration files section of the MPV manual and kind of figure out how to do everything yourself. Because everything is in the manual, it's just not that user friendly. So basically what you do is you open up a text file and then paste in this text that I'm gonna put in the description of this video. Now, the only thing that you're gonna to wanna to change on here is these last two lines, sub font and sub size. So I have it set to Simson because that's a Chinese font and I use MPV to study Chinese but you can either just delete this line if you want to use the default font, or you can put in a font that matches whatever language you're studying if you're kind of a stickler for fonts like I am. And then the other thing is font size. So you can put in a smaller font size if you want because 50 PX is pretty big. So besides those two things, everything else should work pretty well for you. And what you wanna do is save this text file. And now when you're saving it, you gotta be careful where it says save as type, make sure you change it from a TXT to all files. And then what you want to do is save it as mpv.conf, C-O-N-F. And now we have to save it in the right location, the right directory. So how to find the right directory is you want to go to the bar at the top and click percentage sign, app data, percentage sign. And that's just a shortcut that takes you to the app data roaming folder. And then you want to go down to MPV and you want to save it right here. So we can see I already have one saved. It just contains the same contents that I have right here but you wanna save it right there. And after you do that, the next time you open MPV, all of the settings should be changed. And if you ever wanna take a stab at adjusting or customizing the settings, you wanna to go to that directory, open up the conf file, the configuration file in a text editor, and then edit it according to the syntax and instructions that you can find on the MPV website. Okay, so now that we have the configuration file set up, let's take a quick tour through what it's actually like to use MPV as a video player, and then we can get on to how scripts work and things like that. So right here, I just have a normal anime file in the form of an MP4, and I also have the accompanying subtitle file. So if I just double click to open up the file in MPV, the first thing that we notice is that it actually remembers where it was last time. So this is actually something that we specified in the configuration file. It's this really convenient feature where let's just say I was 16 minutes into watching this and then I exit it out and come back later. Well, it remembers that I was 16 minutes in. So really convenient feature. Also, you might notice that it automatically loads up the subtitle file. And this is gonna happen whenever the subtitle file has an identical name to the video file, but you can also just manually load up subtitle files by dragging and dropping them onto MPV. Now, you might have already noticed that MPV is a very minimalist video player. There's not even any file menu or anything like this. There's a little bit of stuff on the bottom here, like we can see we can play or pause the video, we could go to the next video or previous video, and then we could you know, change our position in the video. And we also, right here, we can control the audio tracks and subtitle tracks, or we could mute the video. But besides that, that's really all we can do on the screen right here. Everything else is done with hotkeys. So, in order to use MPV effectively, you do have to kind of memorize a couple of hotkeys, but there's not too many you need in order to really hit the ground running. And so I will put a link in the description to the MPV manual where you can see a full list of all of the hotkeys. And I'll also mention that you can customize any of the hotkeys you want with the configuration file. But for now, let's just take a quick tour through this kind of quick cheat sheet that has what I consider to be the most useful hotkeys that MPV comes with right out of the box. So first of all, just pausing and playing, you can use the space bar to pause and play like most video players. You can also use the P key on the keyboard to pause and play. And you can also right click with the mouse to pause and play. And then so for seeking, starting with the smallest time increment, you can use shift left and shift right to go forwards or backwards exactly one second. So that's pretty useful. And then with the normal, just right or left button, you can go forwards or backwards in five second increments. And with up or down, you can go forwards or backwards in 60 second increments. And another really convenient feature is with control left or control right, you can go forwards or backwards based off the subtitle line. So 
uh, control right will take you to the next subtitle line and control left will take you to the previous subtitle line. And this is really the most useful one to use when you're learning a language because most of the time the reason why you might be rewinding is because you missed a line and you want another shot at trying to hear it. So that's a really cool feature. Of course, it only works when you actually have a subtitle line loaded up. Otherwise, it can't know when to rewind or fast forward to. Now with playback speed, so you can use square brackets to either speed up the video or slow down the video. And at any time you can use the backspace button to return the speed to normal. And you can also use curly brackets to double or half the speed. Lots of fun. And now another cool feature is that it makes this distinction when you're taking a screenshot between whether you should keep the subtitle line or not. So if you just hit S, then by default, it's going to take a screenshot that includes the current subtitle line. But if you hit capital S or shift S, then it's going to take a screenshot that doesn't include the subtitle line. So that's pretty convenient because whether or not you're going to want the subtitle line often depends on why you're taking a screenshot. And now here with the subtitle, so this is where things start to get really cool in MPV. So first of all, this one's a, a little bit counterintuitive perhaps, but a lot of subtitle files come with built-in styling. And when I say styling, I mean like what font to use, what font size to use, what color to have the text in. And uh, as you can see right here, this is a .ass file. I know, kind of unfortunate file extension name, but ASS files uh, are subtitle files that come with a lot of formatting. And so by default, it's going to preserve all of that formatting or we can hit U to turn the formatting off and then it's gonna show all the text with whatever default formatting you've specified in the configuration file. So for me, remember I had a Chinese font. So this is a Chinese font we're seeing right here. It doesn't look all too different, I know. And also it's pretty big because remember I specified that I wanted it to be 50 PX. But then at any time I can hit U and turn the subtitles back to the original setting. And now the really cool thing about the way that MPV handles subtitle files is that it makes a distinction between subtitle visibility and what subtitle track you're loading up. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually gonna switch over to this MKV file right here. So an MKV file is a file that can come with multiple audio tracks or multiple subtitle tracks. And this one in particular comes with seven subtitle tracks. That's what this is right here. And also side note, MPV is really great at handling giant heavy files. This file right here is almost eight gigabytes. It's like an ultra high quality Blu-ray rip of Kiki's delivery service and it can play it flawlessly with no glitches or anything. So back to the subtitles, by pressing J on the keyboard, I can flip through all the different subtitle tracks that exist within this MKV file. So we can see there's a French one, an English one, a Japanese one, and multiple Chinese ones. And so let's say that I'm wanting Japanese, so I want the Japanese file. So I can flip through these eight different options, including having no subtitles, and find the one that I want. But now let's say what I want to do is watch with no subtitles and only turn the subtitles on when I miss something and I wanna see what I missed. Well, by default, if we were using, for example, another media player, we might have to flip through all eight options with the subtitles in order to go from having the Japanese subtitles on to having no subtitles on. But with MPV, separate from which subtitle you're loading up, which you select with J, with V, you can change the status of subtitles to hidden or displayed. So we can see right now the subtitles are on the screen. If I hit V, it's gonna hide them. But if I hit V again, it's gonna show them again. And we can see it loads them up instantly. I don't have to rewind and let the line reload or anything. And so with this, I can use J to select which line I want, which is the Japanese ones in this case. And then I can just use V to hide them and turn them off and then if I want to check what I miss at any time, I can rewind and then turn them on and see. And when I'm rewinding, I can actually use the control left right option I talked about a second ago that lets me seek based off of subtitle line so that I can go back the exact amount, turn on the subtitles, view it with the subtitles on, and then just hit V to turn them off again. So this distinction between the visibility status and which subtitle line is loaded up is really convenient for language learners. Okay, so finally, let's talk a little bit about scripts. So scripts for MPV are just like add-ons for Anki or extensions for Chrome. They're basically additions to the program that any user can make and then put online for other people to benefit from. And it's really these scripts that make MPV such a powerful tool for language learning in particular, because there's a bunch of them that let you make really high quality Anki cards really quickly. So like I also said at the beginning of this video, in order to have this video not become too long, I'm not gonna go into the details of how to use specific scripts in this video. I'm gonna save that for a future one, but I am just gonna show you how to set scripts up and just one cool feature that one script can give you. So 
what you're seeing on the screen right now is the kind of GitHub repository of all the public scripts that people have put online. So I'll put a link to this in the description so that you can read through and see if there's any ones that you think would benefit you. But the one that I'm going to introduce today is called MPVacious. It's kind of a play on MPV and Voracious because Voracious is another program that lets you make Anki cards really quickly. And this script has a bunch of different features. So again, I'm going to leave the details for a future video, but I'm just going to show you one little kind of almost side feature that it has and how you can do something really cool with it. So in order to download and install it, you want to go to, and again, I'm not a master of GitHub, so maybe there's a better way to do this. But what I do is I click on code and then download zip. And then I'm just going to save it. That's just a program that I use to download files. And then you want to open up this zip and open up the folder inside of that zip and find subs to SRS .lua. So you can see I already have that here, but it's really this .lua file that contains the script. And that's what we're going to use to actually get the functionality that we want out of MPV. So because I already have the file right here, I'm going to close this. And now all you have to do is add this script to the right directory. So it's actually the same directory that we put the configuration file in or close to the same directory. So again, if we go to percentage sign, app data, percentage sign, and then MPV, then you want to make a new folder here called scripts, all lowercase, just like this. And then inside of that folder, put the Lua folder. And that's all you have to do to install the script. As soon as you do that, then the script will be activated next time you open MPV. Now, in conjunction with installing this script, there's one other thing that you have to do. You have to install this clipboard inserter Chrome extension. And there's also a Firefox equivalent as well that I'll link in the description. And you'll see what this does in a second. But basically, you got to install this extension. And then within Chrome, I don't know what the equivalent on Firefox is, but you have to go to the extension settings. So if you click right here on this puzzle piece thing in Chrome, find the clipboard inserter, click on the three dots and then click manage extensions. You have to go down and make sure that you turn on allow access to file URLs. If you don't turn this on, then it won't work. And I also just like to pin the extension so that I have quick access to it here. So yeah, what you want to do is install the clipboard inserter and then go to texthooker.com. This is just a website that I threw up specifically for this purpose. So what you have to do is go to texthooker.com and then click once on the clipboard inserter add-on so that it says on. Make sure that it says on, otherwise it's not going to work. Okay, so now let's go to MPV and make sure that a subtitle file is loaded up. And so what you have to do is first press A. This brings up the menu for the script that we just installed, MPVacious. And if you click I, then you can get a more detailed version of the menu. But basically, you want to press A to open up that menu and then press T. And that's going to enable, what did it call it? Clipboard autocopy. So we want to enable clipboard autocopy. Then you can press A one more time to hide that menu. And now what's going to happen is that if everything went well, then every subtitle line should automatically get copied over to this page. And so the reason why this is cool is because then we can use a pop-up dictionary like Yomi-chan to look up all the words in the subtitle file. And if we wanted to make cards, again, there's already a, a bunch of features specifically for making cards that contain audio really quickly in MPVacious, but I'll show that in a future video. But even without making cards, let's just say you wanted to immerse and look things up as you went. One cool thing that you could do if you're a little more advanced is have the subtitle loaded up, but then use V to hide it. And then basically full screen the show that you're watching. So I can't actually full screen it because I have an ultra wide monitor, but uh, I mean, I could, but then you guys wouldn't be able to see the whole thing. So we'll just pretend that I have it full screened right now. And then watch the show with no subtitles. And then whenever you feel like you missed something or you wanted to confirm something or you wanted to look something up, then you can just pause and then use Alt-Tab to switch windows. That's just the, the uh, hotkey for switching windows on Windows 10. And then you can see all the, the lines that were just set in that show. And then you can look up the one that you want. And if you wanted, you can make a card and things like that. So this is just a really cool way for watching raw with the support of being able to look things up. And if you wanted to, you could also just watch with the subtitles on. And then whenever you wanted to look something up, go back. And then the nice thing is you have the whole conversation here. 
So again, this is just a little preview of what you can do with scripts, but I think this is pretty cool. So there you go. While editing this, I just realized I didn't explain what was actually going on very well. So basically what is happening in the setup that I just showed is that first of all, MPVacious, the MPV script is copying every subtitle line to your clipboard. And then the Chrome extension clipboard inserter that we installed is taking what's ever on your clipboard, so whatever you copy, and inserting it onto the current text page. And what texthooker.com is, is just a blank text page with nice formatting that the clipboard inserter extension can use to inject the text in. So that's basically what's happening. Whatever you copy to your clipboard is going to show up on the text hooker page as long as you have the clipboard inserter extension turned on. So that's about it for this video, but I am planning on making another video in the near future where I go into more detail on how to use some of the amazing user-made MPV scripts that are out there. So if you benefited from this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that one. And also consider checking out my Patreon because over on my Patreon, I have tens of hours of Q&A content where I answer language learning related questions from patrons. So thanks again so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.